How do you do, Lefenderinos? Welcome back to another episode of Hot News. I want to thank everybody who's shown the support over the last week while we've been banned over on UFT Tech, in which case, if you're hearing what you're banned, check out this video right up here where I detail exactly the ridiculous reasons why YouTube decided to ban our main channel. Anyways, this should be the last Hot News episode that has to be on this channel. Not quite sure what the future of this channel is. Thankful that we have a second channel at times like this, but just don't quite know what to do uh, trying to manage two channels at this point. But regardless, Regardless, you're not here for the chitter chatter. You're here for the big bang GPU time. And oh man, we got some big bang GPU time going down because RTX 30 series stuff's just getting more confirmed left, right, and center. That is to say, there are more leaks and information coming out that seem to corroborate with previous leaks that we've been hearing. So let's just get right on into it. Number one is the specs of the upcoming GPUs. We have the specs of the next gen Titan, the RTX 3090 and the RTX 3080. Not a whole lot new here, so we'll just go over a few things. The RTX 3080 is going to have the same amount of CUDA cores as the 2080 Ti, but have 10 gigabytes of VRAM at 19 gigabits per second, which is faster than the 2080 Ti. The 3090 will have 5,248 CUDA cores, 12 gigabytes of memory, 21 gigabits per second memory at that. And then the Titan will have 24 gigabytes of memory, 17 gigabits per second at 5,376 CUDA cores. So obviously we see that this stacks up really well. And this is also in line with previous reports that we were hearing with regards to the specs of the 3080 coming in at the 2080 Ti's spec level. But that doesn't mean that they're equal at performance. No, my friends, in case you want to see what they perform like, well, we have some details on that as well because there are 3D Mark Time Spy scores coming out. And as you can see right here on the slide, the 3080, which is what this unknown NVIDIA Ampere GPU is supposed to be, actually performs pretty gosh dang well. So compared to the Founders Edition 2080 Ti, it is 31% faster, or just raw synthetic benchmarks. Compared to the Titan RTX, it is faster than that as well. It is faster than one of the highest end AIB partner models that you can get, the MSI Lightning Z, and then it's also faster than a liquid-cooled Titan V. However, what it is not faster than is the RTX 2080 Ti's Extreme Overclocking Kingpin score, which came in slightly faster than the 3080. So what we have a comparison here is 1900 megahertz versus 2400 megahertz on that high-end RTX 2080 Ti score. So so it's 31% faster than the Founders Edition 2080 Ti, but it's not faster than the fastest 2080 Ti that could have ever been out there, which makes sense. This is kind of in line with how we saw things go from Pascal to Turing, or even from Maxwell to Pascal. The highest, fastest liquid nitrogen overclocks, they weren't bested by stock clock cards. But if this is the stock clock, or even more entertaining for thought, this is the engineering samples. So this isn't actually even the final clocks, which might be faster down the line. These will perform phenomenally in just regular gaming scenarios. This is not ray tracing scenarios, this is straight up gaming. So 31% faster, if it's the same price, would that be enough for you to be interested? Let me know down below in the comments. Let's say a 3080 costs $1,000, a 2080 Ti is $1,200. Is a 31% increase two years later good enough for you? Or do you want Nvidia to be doing more? Do you want more out of them? Do you want faster performance? Let me know. And again, just to reiterate, if that is indeed the 3080, that has the exact same amount of CUDA cores as the 2080 Ti has faster VRAM, but what we're likely looking at here is some improvements and efficiencies made with the Ampere architecture and with NVIDIA switching over to seven nanometers. It is a pretty good looking environment to see and if we could just get 30% bump for the same price. Maybe I'm pipe dreaming with the price thing. Who knows? And who knows what the Navi cards are gonna be called? Well, apparently we do now because there's now the code name for the Navi 23 graphics card, which is likely supposed to be the RX 6500 somewhere in there. It is now codenamed GFX 1032. We have that. It's slightly above the 1033, which is the Van Gogh APUs that we're expecting, and then the 1031, which is the RX 6600M replacement. So now that's been listed in product spec sheets. But that's not the only AMD news we got going on. It turns out that somebody has been able to analyze a Renoir die, which is the upcoming APUs that we're excited to see from AMD, which is the Zen 2 CPU cores with the integrated graphics. You can get eight cores with all of that. Well, that's not the only improvement you can get on the APUs. It turns out that when you look at the die, 
that you can indeed get 16 PCI Express 4.0 lanes. That's one of the good things. This is also coming out in the motherboard listings of B550s. They're showing that the Renoir APUs should be able to have a full 16X lane slot. The reason this matters is because one of the arguments against previous APUs from AMD was that if you put a graphics card in there, it was going to be limited by the PCI Express slot. This isn't the case for the vast majority of average graphics cards, but it did limit your ability on the upper end of things. But if you're buying a 2400G or 3400G, were you really slapping a 2080 Ti in there? Were you? Well, it looks like Apple is not gonna be slapping any ARM processors into their hardware, at least for WWDC, which is supposed to happen today as this video is being released. I'm not even sure if it's happened by the time the video has come out, which in which case you already know all of the actual news, but it's been reported that Apple is supposed to be going with ARM processors for its upcoming devices in certain regards. Well, according to John Prosser, as well as other leaks coming out, there will be no hardware unveiled at WWDC and it will be a software only event so it will just happen have to happen later in this year so John Prosser tweeting out that it looks like any possible hardware has been scrapped at this point and then there's other reports coming out that the first arm based 13 inch MacBook Pro and 24 inch iMac will be coming later this year but of note here is that the iMac and the MacBook Pro will be getting arm variants whereas I've previously speculated that it was going to be more the MacBook Air lineup and not necessarily something that they would launch as a Pro model with it in case they're doing that and Apex Legends is doing that they are rolling out to a few more platforms they're coming to the Nintendo Switch as well as to Steam and they're enabling crossplay across all of those so whether it's PC Xbox One PS4 or the Switch cross play will be available at the end of the year and that is likely when we're going to be getting cyberpunk 2077 i say likely because they delayed the game again in case you didn't hear me talk about that last week in an episode of hot news november 19th is the new release date well they've said that the game will be available at launch on the ps5 and the xbox series x so if you buy it for the ps4 or the xbox one you will automatically have it on launch day so get your ps4 versions now and you'll be automatically on the ps5 with them in that in case you want to take advantage of the next gen hardware that will have to happen at a later date sometime likely next year so but they'll give that out for free as well so in case you want next gen cyberpunk graphics you'll get that if you buy the ps4 version so it's a win-win no reason not to buy the game when it comes out if the reviews are decent or as i will do pre-order the dang thing because that's i just i have to i have to support cd project red i don't care if the game is trash they're getting my money. It's the same thing with Final Fantasy VII Remake, and it was the same thing with Kingdom Hearts 3. I've waited too gosh dang long, and I'm gonna play it regardless of what anybody says about it, and they could tell me it's trash, but I'm going to enjoy it for myself or not enjoy it for myself. And that's how you're gonna have to treat Disney Plus at this point, because they are canceling their free trial. It's gone. In case you wanna try out Disney Plus, you have to pay for it up front. No more seven day free trial. So what do you think of this? Does this bother you? And does it bother you that we know very little about the Earth's ocean. Some people say it's the most alien place on Earth. Well, there's a group that's been working to get rid of that and map the entire Earth's ocean floor. Don't know why I said it like that. My mouth just slurred the words there. Well, the Seabed 3030 project has announced that nearly 19% of the ocean floor has been mapped, which is up from 6% just three years ago. So they're doing good work. Hopefully they'll get the rest done sometime soon. And sometime soon we'll have more solar panels, which is what Tesla's goal is. And turns out they're way more efficient than they used to be. There's a report coming out saying that they are about 10% more efficient and they've dropped in price about 17%. So there's probably not a better time to go to a solar roof in case that's what you've been doing. There's not been a better time in the past there probably will be a better time in the future as the technology continues to advance that's the whole point of being you know an early adopter you got to pave the way for that kind of stuff which is what a lot of people have been doing with chrome they've been paving the way in the sacrifice of their ram well it turns out that chrome is looking to make sure that that's less of a sacrifice they're going to be implementing a feature called segment heap which has already found its way into microsoft edge and they're saying that it could reduce memory usage by 27 percent or you know you should have just downloaded more ram but you know, I guess Google can make a change too. And you should change if you're really on Adobe Flash still because they want you to uninstall. They're gonna be asking you to uninstall by the end of the year, but in case you haven't uninstalled Flash, do it now. Uninstall Flash, don't have that on your computer, stop it. 
but you could have computer versions of IMAX documentaries in case you use the Hulu web browser, which we've talked about before that there's a class action lawsuit against Hulu because they were throttling the web browser version apparently because they want people to use their apps regardless of this segue, Hulu is now going to have 16 new IMAX documentaries that you're gonna be able to watch. IMAX saying that they should still be beautiful, regardless of the fact that you're not watching them on a 72 by 53 foot screen. But in case you want the list of documentaries that you're gonna be able to watch, you can check the screen right now or go to the link in the video description, which you can do on a web browser. And this is the second web browser beat bit of news that we have, which is Opera's GX, which is their gaming web browser, has a key few updates. Number one, adds a browser-wide dark mode, which is pretty great. But now it also has Discord integration, as you can see here on top of other social media integrations that it's had in the past. But Opera GX, another way of using web browsers in case you needed that. And in case you need more hot news, don't you worry. There'll be some more for you tomorrow, okay? You, you can't have it all in one day. We just need to take one bite at a time. And that's going to be it. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for all your support. It's really meant the world to us. And I will see you on the next thing that we do. Might be here, might be on the other channel. We'll find out. Dragon Ball Z.